Hey guys, how's it going? This is Corey Kamori. I just wanted to let you know that this video here is going to be a little different than some of the other song meanings videos I've been doing lately. Uh, I went into this video with the intention of having it be a full-on discussion video, very similar to the Opeth one that was just posted, and the Haken and Coheed and Cambria ones that I did a few weeks ago. And unfortunately, my camera decided to shit the bed. Uh, the file that was on my SD card got erased. And yeah, so now I'm left with, well, do I just let this thing not be presented to folks? Because I really wanted to share this video with you guys. It was a fun episode that I was able to record with Landon Brewer, who's a friend of mine and a coworker of mine at the music venue I work at. And we had a great discussion about Clutch. So I was kind of put into uh, between a rock and a hard place. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We still have the audio. Uh, I'm going to release this as a audio video um, and let you guys still experience and uh, hopefully have fun listening to the discussion we had uh, about Clutch and the song Mob Goes Wild. So again, apologies uh, for no actual video here. I'm hoping that in the future uh, Landon will be able to come back in and we can talk some more about Clutch and he had mentioned maybe talking about video games, video game music, stuff like that. So. Uh, hopefully in the future we will not have these problems, but as technology, as you all know, technology sometimes has a mind of its own and decides to do things that are out of our control. So with that said, thank you so much for the support. Hope you guys enjoy. What's going on guys? My name's Corey Kamori and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Mob Goes Wild by Clutch. And today I have a special guest with me. Uh, doing this video here with me. Please introduce yourself for the audience, sir. Uh, Landon Brewer. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've gotten off to an awkward start, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I asked Landon to come in and discuss uh, this song with me because, you know, Landon and then your brother Neil, you guys really uh, are kind of like the clutch experts that I know of in the area. I mean, you guys really, I mean, Neil got me into clutch and then I know that, you know, you've gone and seen clutch with us a bunch of times. Did you work with us that one time when they were at Amos's? I didn't get to work that show, Okay, but I worked one in, uh, in Columbia. Okay. But you have experience listening to them. I know that they're one of your favorite bands. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have become one of my favorite bands as well. I, you know, w the first album of theirs that I listened to was earth rocker. So I, I, I got in late to it, but then going back and listening to everything, I was like, this band is so much fun. Like, they're just fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, so, again, being that you have just a strong affinity for the band as I do, I was like, well, let's let's talk some clutch. I need somebody to talk clutch with. Let's talk some clutch. So, yeah. but, um, so real quick, before we jump into our experience listening to clutch and uh, just our overall feelings for uh, their music and you know, what it is about them that is in, enticing to us musically. Um, give everybody some background on on what it is that you do, because you, you work with me at a music venue, and you have worked in the music industry and just uh, art and design and stuff like that. So just in case anybody wants to inquire about some work that maybe they can get from you. Yeah, um, I do some graphics. Uh, started going to school for graphics. Um and then just decided that wasn't necessarily my calling, but I still do some stuff with that. Um, I also do much, most any kind of artwork. Uh, lately, I've been doing uh, like video game system modding, trying to update systems, and it's just fun to do. Uh, but I do that. I do lighting at Amos's, and I've done stagehand and things like that other places. Um, also, oh yeah, another big thing is uh, I've worked in beer for the past three years, working in breweries. Huge industry here in North Carolina. Absolutely, <laughs> the it is. Beer capital of the world, it seems like sometimes. Or at least the, the uh, microbrewery capital of the yes. world. <laughs> so, um, how so how did you really get involved in, in doing work like that? How did you 
I guess let's back up and how, how did you really get started in doing some of the design stuff did, that you did? You said that you were going to school for it for a while or trying to, you know, work in it uh, from an academic standpoint. Is that is that what kind of brought back brought about that uh, desire to do design or what what got you into that? Most of that is uh, whenever I was like a little kid since I was very young. I mean, my whole family's done artwork, so I've been doing art since I can remember mm -hmm. and just kept doing it, started getting more of a, a niche with it and started doing uh, the mechanical design and things like that. So I really liked the, the more technical artwork. So I like doing more uh, graphic type stuff. Okay, cool. And then I worked in it for a year and just had people asking for like the smallest changes and just like just weird requests and just I mean it, it gets old after a while dealing with customers like that. I've gotten that with video editing before yes. where you have something that it takes a really long time to do and then uh, a lot of people don't understand that you know just changing one little thing can sometimes mean that you have to go back and yeah. change everything about it and you go oh my god all right i guess i will do it for the paycheck but um so yeah i could i could definitely relate to that as far as going really the the really nitpicky things you know but it is what it is i guess at the yeah. end of the day that and the not understanding design and mm -hmm. being like oh i can make this in word you go right ahead and make that <laughs> in word. you go right ahead and make that in word <laughs> Or MS Paint or something like that. <laughs> Basically. So um, so when did you really get involved with doing the lighting stuff? Because um, you've done the lighting stuff for, for a little while now. I mean, mm -hmm. at least for the almost the entire year. My God, there's like a crazy ass lawnmower or something outside. I'm sure it's going to be blower. leaf blower from hell. Just like <laughs> going to be on the, the video here. Very professional, thank you, sir. Um, so, uh, but how did so how did you really get involved in that? Uh, you know, in the in the lighting world, because I mean, the last show that you did recently was you know, I mean, you've worked with some pretty big bands, mm -hmm. and uh, I know the last show you worked was uh, quite a uh, demanding uh, endeavor as far as the requirements of not only the lighting but just everything else going on that show. Um, can you explain how you got involved in that stuff? Um, I had worked on some analog consoles. I don't. I know that's what they use for sound. Is that still lighting too? Yeah, I get same well, basic thing. Just older consoles, yeah. Yeah, but I've worked on older consoles. I had never really used a digital console, and then I got thrown headfirst into Grand M.A. And so you were used to turning knobs and having to move sliders just, just and stuff just like... Just knobs and faders, and that's it. And I did that once at the old Amos's yeah. uh, when DJ was... I don't know if he was sick or whatever, yeah. but I, ran, I did one show, and I was just like... Okay, I'm just gonna slide it up here, and like it was very like you had to do everything. Yeah. There was no automating yeah. any of it. That's exactly it. And so, then I went from that straight to just here's Grand MA, figure it out. <laughs> Which well, is, how did you figure it out, really? Well, I didn't program everything that we have in our um, show file. Okay, so it's. It's just uh, like a one that was set up and just like some general movements, general colors and functionality. And then we've just kind of uh, adjusted and fixed certain things to mm -hmm. to make it a little better. OK, um, so right off the top of your head, what was what was one of the bands that you enjoyed really running lights for that? Uh, you felt you were able to really create uh, a really cool show from a lighting perspective that complemented the music. Um, it was probably the co-headliner uh, Intervals and Veil of Maya show. That was oh cool. That was probably one of my favorites. Um, but I didn't know, especially for Veil of Maya. I mean, most of it was just 
just strobes the whole time because they had their own lighting yeah. rig with a uh, time code and I just ran lighting with that and <clears throat> after like one song I got to where I was like oh okay so literally every single one of these breakdowns and stuff is just it's just gonna be strobes the whole time so I mean that one was pretty easy but uh Veil of Maya or Veil of Maya was pretty easy and then uh intervals was very intricate and kind of difficult but really fun okay cool awesome so um outside of the stuff that you've worked on are there any shows that you've been to where the lighting uh side of it really kind of just made you go whoa like this is next level shit right here uh the show that we went to the um gojira show oh yeah that that, that lighting, was some next level shit. That lighting show was pretty damn good. It, for context, uh, we, we got we went to go see Gojira play with uh, Deaf Heaven at the Fillmore in Charlotte, mm-hmm. and uh, the lighting uh, technician who was back behind that console was literally dancing around on that board yeah. like a DJ or like he was playing a piano. Yeah, there was no there was no set like timed show. It was him running it manual the entire time. And if anybody lis- anybody who's watching right now is listening to Gojira, you will know just how technical and absolutely yeah. insane their time signatures are, and just yeah, oh my god, I was like, I was like, there's got to be some element of this that's like automated, and it wasn't. I was no. like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a beast, and he's he, probably not getting yeah. any love for what he's doing either. So. I yeah. mean, good lights, just like good sound, I mean, they can really make or break a show, in my opinion, because yeah. you're going for that whole experience. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's crazy, man. Crazy stuff. So, all right, well, then, um, so let's get into, let's get into Clutch. Let's get into some of our experience listening to Clutch and uh, what, what about the band really uh, resonated with us. So I remember the first time I listened to them was it was right, around the time it was right around the t- uh time that it was right before psychic warfare was about to be released so like okay. i said i came in really late with them and y- your brother neil mm-hmm. uh he he had suggested that you know i listen to some of their music because uh at the time uh, our band Terratorn was just starting really mm-hmm. so i was listening to a lot of the sword i was like uh, listening to a lot of sleep yeah, I'm repping the sword today too. Rest I in peace. Felt, I just felt like it would be a little too much to do clutch on clutch. Yeah, so I was like, let's, let's mix it up a little. Super clutch fan. Um, but I remember I was listening to the sword. I was listening to sleep, mm-hmm. and then I started listening to the clutch, and it really helped inform the direction that music was going to end up going in. Yeah. And and oddly enough, the other band I was listening to was Periphery. Why I don't know, but it it, it did inform the music in some capacity. Yeah. Um, but I remember him turning me on to earth rocker and when i got that album like i went out i listened to it on i think i had listened to it on youtube or something and then after that i was like this is fucking great and i went out and bought the vinyl Mm -hmm. and that album for me is all killer no filler there's not a bad song on that thing and i didn't i didn't think it could really even get better than that and then when they released psychic warfare i really really loved that album didn't have all of the hits the way that Earth Rocker did for me. There was a yeah. couple that were like, eh, well, this is good, but I could take it or leave it. Um, but then uh, and then I went back and I listened to uh, Blast Tyrant, mm-hmm. which, again, for me was like, holy oh. shit, this whole thing yes. is just nasty. Yes. So that was my experience listening to them and, and really kind of diving into their stuff. But how did you really get introduced to them? Uh, I actually got introduced to them the same time as Neil. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get super into uh, like listening to every song and like getting diving super deep into all their albums until a little bit later. But I started listening to them in '05 because they were on Viva La Bam. Oh, okay. And they were playing. Uh, Mob Goes Wild in a bouncy castle sliding down a hill when all of them were on different uh, uh, types of things sliding down the hill. Like, like one of slides or something? No. Oh, like, oh, like those, like, uh, I know what you're talking about. Like, uh, 
not like a slip and slide, but like one no, of those. More like it was a winter, so it was snow. Oh, it was like no, sledding? it was more like uh, they bought one of the like gorillas that like you would see at like a, a putt putt course. Oh, and they put snowboards on the bottom of that. Somebody had a donkey. Someone had a <laughs> shopping cart. <laughs> like they had random things that they were all going down this hill with, and they were just trying to see who could get to the bottom of the hill, or more accurately, who could even make it without falling over. Oh my god! And Clutch was in this bouncy castle playing Mob Goes Wild, sliding down the hill with them. Oh wow! And that's that was the that first was, introduction. Yes, that was when I started listening to him. So Mob Goes Wild is actually the first song that got me into Clutch. Wow, how fitting. Yes. That is odd. I did not know that. I couldn't have planned this any better. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, okay. Well, yeah, that would have sold me instantly as well. I mean, like this band looks like they're just fucking hilarious and fun to hang around. Like I just want to hang with these dudes. So, okay, so that was your first experience. What what was what went through your mind when you saw that? I mean, Honestly, it was kind of normal because Neil, me, and our brother Blake, like, I mean, we've watched, we used to watch that show religiously. So, oh, okay. I mean, we, so it was kind of normal, but like the music was like, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we all got into them. Okay. Especially me and Neil because we listen to stuff like that more. But yeah. That's awesome, man. That's hilarious. Yeah. I used to watch stuff like, I was watching stuff like Fuse and everything like oh, that yeah, around that absolutely. time. Oh, and that really did help inform a lot of the music that I was listening to growing up. And uh, and yeah. it's funny that, you know, it's funny and sad that, you know, we, we don't have anything really like that anymore. I mean, obviously, no. I have YouTube, but just the way that it was serialized and released in a more traditional way, it kind of, I don't know, I guess it just kind of... Now you have to put more effort into searching for newer things, yeah, whereas sometimes really it was just put out there. I mean, um, literally, like every what was it like every Wednesday night, Headbangers Ball, man. Yeah, man. So, what was that 11, 12 o'clock? Yep. And then they, uh, but then like Fuse had like it was like the No Pants Party or some weird yep. shit like that. And you know, again, there's just so much great music that was just being just uh, sh- like really shown to like completely new audiences at that time. Mm-hmm. So. Definitely. Uh, I miss that to a certain degree. There are some elements of that, that I don't miss. So I'm like, ah, I'd like yeah. to be able to just go grab my shit whenever I want to listen to it. Instead but of like watching a couple videos yeah. of songs you don't want to listen and to. You absolutely yeah. have no fucking care. Like you just don't give a shit about at yeah. all. So out of, uh, so you said Mob Goes Wild was the first song that you ever heard from them. But out of all the releases that they put out, are there any... Uh, are there any that resonate with you more than others? Or I mean, do you like all of their stuff? Or what's your favorite album of theirs? Um, ah, man, that's a hard question. Because for really me, is. I still have to go back to Earth Rocker because it was such a, it was such a crazy experience listening to that and thinking yeah. like I all I kept thinking to myself was, I can't. And I've I've said this so many times on this channel, mm-hmm. but I a lot of times uh, me being introduced to new music, I have this immediate emotion where I go how the fuck have I never heard this? Or why did I never jump into this? Like, yeah. I'm such an idiot. It's always this moment of I'm hitting myself because of like, this is so cool. You you literally robbed yourself for years of awesome <laughs> shit. But um, so like, again, I, I think for me, Earth Rocker is always going to be my favorite. Mm-hmm. But I really, I haven't listened to an album of theirs that I didn't like. I didn't really care for the mix on this newest album they released, but the yeah. songs are still really good. But do you have any that I mean, honestly, it's probably one? it's probably Blast Tyrant. It's okay. that's just that's my go to. Like if I mean, regardless of all of them, because I mean, pretty much all of their albums, I absolutely love. I mean, they're really early stuff that's a little more like I guess like thrashy it's almost like hardcore and kind of yeah. punk inspired yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but some of that stuff i don't i don't like it as much because they've completely invo- evolved into like a different band mm-hmm. but i mean that stuff's still not bad but i don't usually yeah. listen to that stuff as much because i'm like if i want to listen to clutch i'm like i want to listen to what clutch is you want the 
the the hard rock vibe mixed with yeah. the, the the stoner rock, the sludginess, but then a they a little bit of bluesy, a little bit of blues. They throw yeah. in some elements of funk. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they really turned into something. If you would have showed me their early stuff and been like, "Here's this band," and then play their newer stuff and be like, mm. "And here's this band," I would have thought they were different bands, completely different bands. Yeah. So uh, it's funny because um, on the last episode I did. Uh, John and I were talking about Opeth and the way that Opeth has evolved. And I feel like to a certain degree, Clutch has done something similar. Yeah. In that they've managed to evolve but not alienate their fan base, which some people with Opeth, they have been pretty alienated oh, without yeah. the growls and everything. Do the roar. Do, do, do the roar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, with Clutch, you know, it's weird because I feel like after Blast Tyrant, everything started to have more of that funk-inspired sound to it. Blast Tyrant is honestly, in my opinion, what shifted. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, ne- like, current, it's a little different. Like, they've gone through a couple phases, but, like, it's a little different from Blast Tyrant. But mm-hmm. that was the big change. Yeah, now it's almost like they've s- they've kind of, and I don't mean this to sound bad, but they've kind of uh, sunken into a... Uh, a ACDC kind of vibe now where like you instantly hear yeah. it and you know that's clutch and yeah the albums yeah. since Blast Tyrant really have sounded very similar to Blast Tyrant just swipe uh slight tweaks in uh production maybe and an approach to some of the songs but for the most part you go oh that's clutch yeah you know now I mean I feel like like Bill Street is is pretty different from like yeah. blast tyrant and like psychic warfare and some of that stuff because those are a little more rock right but i mean if you listen to that one it's it's a little more like groove bluesy kind of feel to though to that one yeah i would definitely agree with that i think even from a thematical standpoint when you're talking about lyrics his lyrics on that album are very much just like everyday kind of stuff mm-hmm. it's not he tends to kind of dabble in doing like the fantasy stuff sometimes yeah, and the yeah. mythology stuff sometimes. And then other times just talking about current things going on and just his life. But that album for me really just is kind of straightforward. It's just talking about things that you would experience in everyday life. Whereas mm-hmm. like Blast Tyrant has, you know, the prophets of doom and, yeah. you know, and even uh, Cypress Grove to a certain degree yeah. has that fantastical element in that it, this is almost like a Quentin Tarantino type of town yeah. that you're getting involved in kind of thing with these yeah. crazy fucked up women. Yeah, it's that are not just... like space and aliens and crazy stuff, but it's yeah. still like, uh, still like a grand thing going on. Right. Right. And whereas Beale street was definitely more down to earth. I felt mm-hmm. like, but, and, and I think moving forward throughout their discography, they've started to mix that up more where some of the, you know, some, Albums have, you know, the front half is more the down earth stuff, and then the latter half is more of the weird stuff and the fun yeah. stuff. But um, it, it's funny that even some of those down to earth elements, he always finds a way, Neil always finds a way to write lyrics that are witty, I feel like, and just very memorable. He has just a way of delivering words that make me go, God damn, I wish I would have thought of ha- like singing something like that. It's yeah. just. It's just fun. You just want to get up and like fucking thrash around and probably dance your ass off too to some of these songs. Yeah. So, but um, all right. So let's uh, so let's get into the song itself. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. So we begin the song with the words. Please allow me to adjust my pants so that I may dance the good time dance and put the onlookers and innocent bystanders into a trance. Give disease so the swine will marry and propagate lies. Tough luck for elected officials. The beast, you see, got 50 eyes. Bring it on home. Spread the wealth. Play it cool. The hand's been dealt. Now all the odds are in our favor. Save the victory speeches for later. Streets on fire. The mob goes wild. Wild, wild. (laughs) Wild, wild, wild. (laughs) So um, jumping straight in. Um, this song for me is really a song that is pretty reflective of the time it was written, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, this album, if I'm not mistaken, when was this album released? Was it 2005? Like, okay, it was 2005. 
So this album really was released at a pretty tumultuous period in in our country's history because it was you know we were really uh head first in the iraq war i mean Mm -hmm. we were dealing with a lot of that stuff still um and i feel like this song is really reflecting that time period um yeah you know I love the please allow me to adjust my pants so that I could dance the good time dance thing. Because, again, you just instantly start thinking of somebody who's on a TV screen trying to hypnotize or uh, gain the the attention of the viewer of like, hey, look over here. Look over here. Don't look over there. Look over here. Look over here. <laughs> um, but what what are some observations that you have as far as uh, as far as the words are concerned? Is there anything that stands out to you as far as um, the way it's worded, what it may mean for you? or uh, I mean, I've, it seems as though to me that it could be definitely directed towards politicians. Yes. yeah, In particular, possibly George W. Bush. Really? Uh, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, look, I mean, it, it seems very, very upfront that the song is talking about like, okay, so we have the words, you know, give disease. So the swine will marry and propagate lies. So it's like, all right, let's just start spreading all this shit out here so that we can start spreading it to the masses and everything. Um, I really think it's interesting because I never really paid attention to it, but that line, the beast you see got 50 eyes. I wonder if the 50 eyes is supposed to be metaphorical for like 50 States, America. I don't know, but that's kind of what I'm seeing it as. You know, that definitely make a lot of sense. The the beast going into the the east over there and just f- tearing shit up. I don't know, um, and and also what kind of brings some of this home for me is, uh, save the victory speeches for later. You know, all the odds are in our favor. Save the victory victory speeches for later. Obviously, there's that famous instance where George Bush was on the aircraft carrier and had mission accomplished behind him, and they hadn't even done shit really at that point. Yeah. So it's like, oh, we made it in there. We're, we're done. <laughs> we're in. <laughs> we haven't done anything yet, but we're in. <laughs> Getting in is half the battle, people. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I mean, really... You know, the streets on fire, mob goes wild. I mean, can for me really either be focused on the place we were invading or even what was going on over here when, I mean, I don't know a whole lot of people. I, again, I was fairly young. I was still a teenager when this all occurred, but I know there was quite a lot of people that were angry that we were going and getting ourselves involved yeah. in that stuff back then. And, um, I remember exactly where I was. I was living in Houston, Texas, and of all places, people in Houston, Texas were not happy about it. Where exactly? Because we all know he that's where he well, he's not yeah. from Houston, but he's from Texas. Yeah. So it was very, very interesting time to be around and experience stuff. And, and I used to love bands, I still do love bands like System of a Down, Rage oh, Against the Machine. Oh yeah. So um and that band, like System in particular, I had gotten into right around this time. So I wish that I had heard this song when this song was released because it would have been sh- right up my alley, mm-hmm. you know, with the, you know, the slightly political ballsiness and yep. just the, the aggressive edge to it. So, um, but yeah, do you have any other observations before we move on? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, let's move on then. Let's move on to the next section here, which. This I would consider to be the chorus. So we have uh, the words, 21 guns, box made of pine, letter from the government sealed and signed, delivered Federal Express on your mother's doorstep. Um, So for me, this section here is really just tying the whole meaning together of, you know, we have all these things that are were occurring. I mean, s- still are occurring. I mean, this is stuff that has happened throughout history. But um, really, it's tying together for me the real life down to earth consequences of what going and getting involved in war really is. Yeah, you got to deal with sending letters to grieving mothers and all this other shit. And you know, it's just it. I like the way that it's set up, like a list. It's almost like a grocery list, the way that he has written it out, where it's just like, mm, it's just regimented. This is just what it is. 21 guns, box made of pine, letter from the government, sealed and signed. 
send that shit in Federal Express. Yeah. You know, it's um so when so when you first heard this song, what about it really kind of resonated with you? Honestly, it was just the like how hype the song is cuz I mean, I was still pretty young when I first heard the song, so I wasn't looking for tons of meanings, but like I I just it was it's a really hype song and I just thought it was a really cool song. Yeah. And obviously they're sliding down a, a hill in a bounce castle playing it. So <laughs> it's just funny to me that they're sliding down a hill in a bounce castle and that kinda even I know it was probably done just for, for lulls. Oh yeah, no, they're not actually playing. There's no way they could play. Well no, but at the same time, like it's interesting. To, I may be reading way too deep into this, but it's almost <laughs> like, you know, everything the song is talking about, you know, just shit sliding downhill, things going downhill real quick in the situation that we were in at the time. So, but uh, I don't know. I might be reading too too deep into it, but it, you're riding on a donkey and shit like that or a fucking gorilla or I mean, whatever. You have Deco the Freak on his magical source, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need to find this video yeah, yes. and try to like incorporate it into this in some capacity so people can see what we're talking about. I'm sure yes. it's on YouTube somewhere. Probably. So I could, I'll help you find it. Okay, awesome. It's a deal. <laughs> so let's move on uh, to the next verse here. Condoleezza Rice is nice, but I prefer a Roni. And that man on the TV who speaks to the dead, you know that man's a phony. Everybody move to Canada. Smoke lots of pot. Everybody move to Canada right now. Here's, Here's how we, we do, do it. it. <laughs> Bum rush the border guard before he and his dog ever knew it. Streets on fire. The mob goes wild. Um, I really, again, I don't think that this is, this is not vague at all. This is, again, just yeah. tying into the overall meaning. Uh, but I really love his play on words and just how bouncy the words are. I prefer Aroni. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so true story. I I thought for the longest time that he was saying, I prefer a roadie. And I was like, I don't what? understand. So then I, when I looked it up, I was like, Aroni. And then when I saw that, I was like, Aroni? What the fuck is Aroni? And then I had to look. I was like, Oh my God! What the fuck? I'm such a dumbass. Like, like a tenderoni, you know, like Michael Jackson, you know, like it's a, a sweet chick, you know, a, a fine young thing kind of. Th I was like, oh God damn it! I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I just had one of those face palm moments. Um, but again, I love his wordplay here. You know, everybody move to Canada, smoke lots of pot. Everybody move to Canada right now. Just it just bounces yeah. so much. And it makes sense to me why they were doing this shit in a bouncing house because everything just, it has this nice bounce and flow to it that when you're listening to this song, you're not really taking in all of this heavy shit or you're, you know, yeah. there's a heavy message, but it's fun. Yeah. They, yeah. It's a lighter, like they, he delivers it in a light way. Right. And it makes it so that, you know, it's all those heavy themes are, they're more palatable i feel like mm -hmm. you know it's not you're not beating someone over the head with stuff because like most of the time if you're beating someone over the head or being too preachy with something no one's gonna listen to you they're just gonna be like oh god just shut the fuck up with well, your that's, politics that's crap. not true we all know how much black panther actually worked <laughs> i don't think black panther oh we're getting on a tangent here oh you're bringing out the nerd in me I don't think Black Panther really hit things like like people over the head with shit like that. I felt like a lot of the themes were critical to the story it was being told, and you had to approach it that way. Some of the stuff was a little uncomfortable, but sometimes you got to do that. But in this case, I don't think he, th they needed to be like, Iraq war is wrong, we need to get out, da-da-da. No, yeah. they're making it fun. They're yeah. using shit like Aroni. I had to fucking look up what Aroni was, and then it made me laugh because I was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe they threw that into this song <laughs> with this kind of like topical uh, material. Yeah. It's comic relief. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a song that, you know, again, when I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, fuck the man kind of thing, but I'm also like, this is fun. <laughs> It's a fun protest song, people. See, just goes to show Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> Y'all taking your shit way too fucking seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there anything else that really sticks out to you? Because, again, 
I know this is going to be probably one of the quicker videos that we've done here on this channel, but I really feel like this song is pretty concise. It's talking about the time it was released, talking about the Iraq war. It's talking about, you know, just politics in general and the whole like, hey, look at me. Don't look over here at the real shit that's going on. Mm -hmm. Don't get involved in things. And I mean, in this one, he says everybody moved to Canada sm and smoke lots of pot. But I mean, could it be get out of America so you don't go overseas and die? Oh, it could be. I didn't even think about it like that. Kind of like a dodge the Get draft out. kind yeah. of thing. Huh. Um, no, that's that's an interesting thought because, yeah, it could almost have that, like, obviously the Iraq war wasn't like there wasn't a draft yeah, or anything it was, like Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. But but no, you're, it could be that. Um, it could also be, you know, what's interesting, every time, and I've noticed this um, over the years, and I don't have many years behind me, but I have noticed that every time we have an election, people are always like, oh, fuck this. I'm moving to Canada. I'm moving to Canada. Every fuck time. this. Every damn time. And you're like, you, you're, you're not going anywhere. Shut the hell up. You're not going anywhere. How do you get, how does shit get better if you just go and move to Canada? Grant, I mean, Canada seems nice and all, but, you know, I, I hear, you know, they, they like their fart jokes and they, you know, they, they love their Terrence and Philip and all that. <laughs> Sorry, Canada. <laughs> I fought on your grave. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it could. I could definitely see it being as you know, everybody moved to Canada. Like, get the fuck out of this, this craziness that's going on. Let's just uh, chill out, smoke some pot, and have some fun. I know Canada was involved in some capacity during that war, but at the same time, they How have involved is Canada ever? <laughs> well. Wow, well, let's shit on Canada right now. We have some Canadian viewers, I'm sure. Actually, we've had a couple. But um, no, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, though, really Canada has yeah. tried to be more methodical about, okay, hold on, hold on. Like, they're always yeah. like, <sighs> nobody hate on this. We're like the drunk best friend at a show who's yeah. just trying to start shit with people. And we're at, fir you know, at first, we're having a fun time. We're just we're having a great old time. And, you know, we like giving people hugs. Sometimes we flip other people off and say some filthy language. But for the most part, we have good intentions and everything. But then you throw us in a mosh pit after we've been drinking a shitload of fucking alcohol. And then you get our Sunday night. Yes. <laughs> the Sunday night concert. Our last Sunday. Um, but then you have our... B our best friend Canada standing on the oh, side going on now it's like oh, uh, oh oh here he goes again oh god oh he hit that guy oh no oh hold on and then he steps in front and be like okay he didn't mean it he he's just he's just excited he's just a little tipsy right now okay come on we got to go home no I'm fine no I'm fine you need to back off you know they're they're kind of like that with us they're like oh okay Canada. come on let's go home <laughs> Canada's just trying to apologize for how their orange friend is acting. <laughs> <laughs> They're our designated driver. <laughs> oh, the hate we're going to get in the comments. Oh, send those dislikes our way. No, please like this video. Subscribe. Um, but no, I, and you know what's cool is I think this song again, it was released clearly at a, at a very distinct time in our country, but I still feel like a lot of these topics being discussed here are, are still relevant today and i think that's why the song i mean hell i know that's why they keep playing the song live you mm -hmm. know it still resonates with people and as every long time, I, every time i've seen them they've played that song mm -hmm. absolutely I, they usually they don't close with that one they close with the wolf man the that's the they've closed with different songs okay um now uh, when I went up to Asheville and saw them at Highland Brewing, mm -hmm. they they opened their encore with Mob Goes Wild. Oh, nice. And my phone had just died. I was there by myself. So I was like, let's go mosh. So I like, I mean, it was just like a push pit. But yeah, yeah. like I no like went, jumped kicking. in there and I was like running around. Because I mean, obviously, like I said, that's like one of my favorite songs by them. So yeah. Yeah, and, and again, I think it still resonates today. And as long as we're involved in war and shit like that, I think it'll always resonate. It's one of those... I think it's going to be one of those timeless rock songs. It's a it's a great song. And every time I've seen them uh, live, they have played it. And uh, the last time I saw them was at Carolina Rebellion. And they opened with it, I believe. I can't remember what they opened with. I'd have to look up that set list. But I know they played it 
uh, at that show. And oh my gosh, it's it's so cool to me that a band like them uh, are still making awesome music because everything that you hear on an album, you know that you can expect just as good, if not better, live. And there's so few bands out there that are doing that stuff. You got yeah. backing tracks up the ass nowadays and yeah. super compressed and processed shit on. And then you have Clutch over here that's creating yeah. an album that is literally a live album, mm-hmm. but it's not just like a live recording. It's literally the album. So, yeah. It's good they stuff. They pride themselves on being good. Absolutely. It's good, good stuff. All right, uh, Landon, thank you so much for coming in today and discussing this song with me. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you, if they want to inquire about maybe hiring you for some lighting work, they want to inquire about getting some uh, graphic design stuff done, mm-hmm. any kind of art stuff, or uh, the video game modding uh, stuff that you've been doing, how can people reach out to you? Uh, my Instagram is extremely easy. It is Landon Brewer. No spaces, no underscores, nothing. Awesome. Well, I'll be sure to include it in the video so that people can reach out to you there. Awesome. And uh, yeah, man, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been Corey Kamori, and we will see you guys next time. Love.